I am Dr. Deepak Govind. Today we shall review the use of lung ultrasound in routine clinical practice. Over the last few years, the use of ultrasound in critically ill patients has gained in popularity. It has been associated with very good outcomes. Lung ultrasound is a fastest non-invasive diagnostic tool used in ICU and in other inpatient settings. Lung ultrasound is rapid, repeatable and free of complication and has a small learning curve. It is common knowledge that ultrasound beam cannot normally pass through air filled structures, making the evaluation of lung parenchyma under the ribs impossible. This does not however prevent the diagnosis of several abnormal conditions including pneumothorax, consolidation, endobronchial intubation, pleural effusion etc. In this video we will try to show you sonographic imaging of the lungs and the finding associated with major respiratory disorders. To demonstrate the basics of lung ultrasound. For the lung ultrasound, we have this small portable bedside ultrasound machine. We will be dealing with two probes for the lung ultrasound. The first and the most commonly used probe is the thin linear probe, which has got a frequency of 5 to 10 megahertz. It is very useful to assess structures which are relatively superficial, like the pleura, and the under, underlying peripheral lung tissue. In certain cases where the patient has got a thick chest wall or if we need to assess the deeper layer of the lung, we will use the thicker curvilinear probe which has got a frequency of 3 to 5 megahertz. For the purpose of a thorough and complete ultrasound examination, we have divided the chest into 6 parts. Anteriorly, it is divided into zone 1, 2, laterally to zone 3, 4 and posteriorly to zone 5 and 6. Zone 1 and 2 are separated by the line which goes through the nipple. 3 and 4 are between the anterior and the posterior axillary lines and 5 and 6 are between the posterior axillary line and the vertebral column. To start the ultrasound examination of the chest, we start by placing the linear probe longitudinally from beneath the clavicle and progressing downwards from zone 1 to zone 2 and then laterally from zone 3 to zone 4. When we wish to see between the ribs, we can turn the probe by 90 degrees and get what is known as transverse view of the lungs. Images formed during lung ultrasound may be real images or they may be artifacts. Real images are true images of non-gaseous structures which are reflected in the ultrasound beam, whereas artifacts are brought about by the reverberation of ultrasound waves on the interface between gas and tissues. Both real images and artifacts have significance in interpretation of the lung ultrasound. In this video, we can see the real image of the skin, subcutaneous tissue and muscle and underlining pleura which is reflected as a white shiny line which moves with every breath. This white line is the pleural line and it corresponds to the surface of the lung. There are few important artifacts which have significance during interpretation of the lung ultrasound. A lines are horizontal lines which are formed beneath the pleural line and they represent the reflection of the pleural line due to the presence of air beneath the pleura either within the lung or in the form of a pneumothorax. In an inflamed lung, there is an increase in the fluid content of the lung, which extends all the way to the visceral pleura. Artifacts generated by an ultrasound waves reflected off the gas fluid interface gives rise to what is known as the B lines or comet tails. B lines are vertical, well defined lines which are laser like and emerge from the pleural line. They move along with the pleural line and spread to the edge of the screen without fading, and they erase the horizontal A lines. B lines represent an increase in the extravascular lung water. Based on the number of B lines, one can differentiate between a thickened interlobular septum or pulmonary edema in which the confluent B lines are less than 7 mm apart. The lung sliding sign indicates the sliding movement of the lung towards the thoracic wall. On the ultrasound image, lung sliding is demonstrated as fleeting dots arising from the pleural line which move in accordance with the patient's respiration. On M-mode sonography, lung movement produces the characteristic seashore sign. 
the lung sliding disappears in pneumothorax, complete atelectasis and in apnea. The lung pulse is a pulsatile movement of the pleural line with each heartbeat. The presence of a lung pulse implies an immobile lung. In a normal lung, we can see that the lung sliding sign is present. A lines are present. There are no or minimal B lines and there is no lung pulse. Now let's discuss the sonographic presentation of few pathological conditions. The first condition which we will discuss is endobronchial intubation. Since the tube is only on one side, only one lung is being ventilated, there will be absence on lung movement on one side. So the normal sliding sign will be absent on the affected side. There will be a lung pulse on the affected side. The normal side, the normal lung will have a positive sliding sign and an absence of a lung pulse. In a pneumothorax, there will be absence of lung sliding on the affected sides. This is typically seen in the apical areas or the segment 1 in a patient who is supine as air gravitates to the most least dependent area of the lungs. There will be no B lines on the affected side. A lines will be present and on a transverse image one can detect what is known as the lung point. The lung point forms the transition between a normal moving lung and the margin of the pneumothorax. On M mode, the seashore sign caused by the lung sliding will be abolished and will be replaced by parallel horizontal lines suggesting absence of structures beneath the pleural line. This sign is called a stratosphere sign and this has a sensitivity of almost 100% and specificity of 78% for a pneumothorax. In a patient of pulmonary edema, there will be an increase in the extravascular lung water and hence this will manifest in the form of increased number of B lines which may be large, confluent and less than 3 mm apart. There are two signs that characterize alveolar consolidation. The first sign is the tissue hepatization sign or the production of a liver like image arising from the pleural line. The second sign is the shred sign wherein the superficial border of the consolidation is smooth and the deep border appears irregular or shredded. Air bronchograms appear as hyperlucent punctiform or linear artifacts within this consolidation. These air bronchograms may be static or dynamic depending on the centrifugal expansion of the air bronchogram with respiration. Atelectasis is characterized by the presence of lung pulse, a static air bronchogram, a raised level of diaphragm on one side and the presence of a pleural effusion on the same side. Dynamic air bronchograms are very rarely seen in atelectasis whereas they are quite common in pneumonia and form a major differentiation between atelectasis and consolidation. Like any other technique, lung ultrasound also has got its own limitation. The presence of subcutaneous emphysema precludes visualization of underneath structure due to the non-propagation of ultrasound waves. Obese patients are also frequently difficult to examine because of the thickness of their rib cage and soft tissues. In conclusion, use of bedside lung ultrasound can improve the diagnostic approach to various abnormalities and minimize the use of costlier, more hazardous and time-consuming diagnostic techniques. Thank you.